Hello again and welcome back to a brand new episode of Sacktown Underground. Keith Joganatis, my partner Celestial Thomas. Celestial, we got a jam-packed episode for the folks at home today. Tell them what we're going to have. All right, guys, before we begin, I want to let you know that all of the events featured here today and events happening around in Sacramento are in our community calendar powered by Sacramento 365. Keith. And we also got a feature on Sean's Coffee Shop and Bakery Celestial. They're celebrating their one year anniversary out there in Galt, California. Oh our gosh. very own Tiffany talked to them. That sounds Check so good. I'm excited to see that. Tiffany is awesome. Yes, indeed. <laughs> All right, guys. And some of our staff here, our lovely directors, producers, went out to Las Vegas to check out the NAB Conference, the National Association of Broadcasters. We also got a great heartfelt story for you called The Power of the Bike, where a 27-year-old woman is making the trek from Las Vegas to Arizona for a great special cause. That is going to be a tearjerker. That is going to be amazing. 27 years old, that's a feat. Um, Keith, you are going to be talking about the Kings later. What's happening with them? Yes, indeed. The Kings Celestial, as you know, are in rebuilding mode. For the first time in a long time, they had a productive season. The question now is, can they jump off that and go forward, or are they going to continue to go backwards? We'll I can tell out. you, you're the specialist. We'll find out. <laughs> And then we're going to end this show today with our musical guests. They are Yellow Dot, straight out of the 209 Stockton, California, a rock band. That is going to be special. And again, guys, please don't forget to look into um, any of the events happening out here in Sacramento and the greater parts of Sacramento on our community calendar powered by Sacramento 365. May 16th through May 27th, an American in Paris at the Community Center Theater. May 12th. Country in the Park 2018 at Cal Expo. May 12th through the 13th, East Sac Garden Tour at David Lubin Elementary. May 12th, Lock Asian Pacific Street Festival and Historic Lock. May 10th through May 19th, Sacramento Beer Week 2018 across the Sacramento region. June 2nd, Sacramento Taco Festival at The Boulevard. June 8th. The Empire Strikes Back at Community Center Theater. And thank you for that, Celestial. And that was our local calendar powered by Sacramento 365. Next on the show, we got a feature from our very own Tiffany, where Sean's Coffee Shop and Bakery has been serving delicious treats and tasty coffee for up to a year now. Tiffany went out there, Celestial, as the company prepares to celebrate their one-year anniversary. Let's check it out. I'm Tiffany Gibson, your host of Sacktown Underground, and today I'm here with Sean of the Coffee Shop and Bakery. It's a beautiful day out here in Galt, family, and we're getting ready to talk about the coffee shop and what's going on here in Galt. Sean, tell us a little bit about the Coffee Shop and Bakery. All right, well, my wife and I started the coffee shop about a year ago. We just celebrated our one-year anniversary about a week ago, and um, we had an idea to uh, open the coffee shop and the bakery, my wife had a bakery here about 10 years ago and did a lot of uh, cool recipes and then we sold that business and she just kind of missed that and we wanted to kind of come back into that at some point. Have something where we could connect to, you know, the people of Gaul in a more personable uh, manner and, you know, we kind of think of it as like the, the, the coffee, the cheers of the coffee shops, you know, where people come in and we know everybody's names and we know their drinks and, and all that kind of thing and so it's been fun. But I think what makes it special is a lot of people that come here on a regular basis you know, they like the fact that they have to come in and they get that whole interaction with us. And, and it's a family-run business, so it's my wife and my daughter that um, are mainly the ones here. And uh, they have that, you know, talk, a little bit of, bit of interaction, and then it's part of their ritual. Let's head inside and take a look. Okay. So, Sean, tell me, this is my first time here. What item do I have to get that I cannot leave without? Well, I would have to say probably our coffee cake. It's our, our best-selling and well-known item. We actually have it on our uh, menu board is our famous coffee cake. Um, it's my wife's recipe, and uh, it's all made completely from scratch. But uh, everything we make here is made in-house except for the bagel. So everything is baked here either in the morning or the night before. Um, you know, some of them are our own recipe stuff. 
our own personal recipes, but everything is baked here. My daughter Christian here actually uh, makes um, some of the things too. She makes uh, big jumbo cookies that are pretty popular. She even makes uh, these homemade dog treats that we actually have from time to time occasionally that are made from peanut butter and bananas. What is your top selling drink? Right, so obviously you know we're a coffee shop, so we make anything um, iced or, um, or hot. And uh, we have the normal stuff you'd find in most coffee shops, like your mochas and lattes and, and uh, you know, our brewed coffees and things like that. Um, one of our number one sellers, though, is our, is our cold brew coffee. We have a cold brew and then a sweet cream cold brew. What it is, it's a cold brew coffee, and um, then our sweet cream cold brew has a splash of our homemade sweet cream that my wife makes. Um, and it's just a splash on the top and it gives that little bit of a sweet flavor. It is by far our number one selling drink. What a fabulous tour of your coffee shop and bakery. There's always good stuff going on here at the coffee shop and bakery in Galt. And with Galt having that hometown feel, tell me what are some of the big things that go on here in Galt that attract people here? I actually do a coffee and cars event here um, once a month, getting ready to start that up again this spring, probably in April. Um, where I, I have people come down on a Sunday morning, no charge, no entry, there's no awards, it's just people show up with whatever kind of car. Um, people hang out, mingle, we serve free coffee to these people, and it's just a good reason for you know people in the car um, car uh, world and car enthusiasts to come out and, and hang out and you know have coffee, and then they can leave whenever they want, and it's a great event. And so we have an Independence Day event that's going to be coming up here. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, that's probably the biggest event we do in Galt. It's put on by the city, um, and it's the Independence Day celebration. And this year it falls on the 30th of June, which is a Saturday before the actual 4th of July. And um, it starts actually in the morning with a, uh, a memorial um, 5K run in honor of um, Kevin Ton, who is a police officer who was killed in the line of duty here. And then about 10 a.m., they start the, um, the famous parade we have. It's a huge parade. We pretty much have five people deep lining on the sidewalks all the way through the middle of town. Just families come out, kids, it's just a really small town feel type thing. Tell me a little bit, I've heard here in town that there's a toy drive that gets done every year. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so uh, the CSD, which is the Consumnus uh, Fire uh, Department, it's an Elk Grove Galt um, Joint fire, uh, fire Department, and the police department do a toy drive um, where they try to generate toys for um, needy families. And this last year, um, so they've been doing that for a few years. This last year, um, they reached out to me because they knew about our coffee and cars and said, hey, Sean, you know, we're a little bit short on our drive this year. We haven't met our mark. Is there any way we could do something? We were literally four days away from the drive day. Wow. And in four days, I you know, made phone calls. I went on some of the local businesses. And that's the great thing about small towns. You can go to local businesses, mom and pa's, and say, hey, you know, can you donate some pizza for the local pizza parlor and Stratton's Pizza here in Galt? awesome awesome business they said yeah sure how many pizzas you want and went to the other businesses and said can you donate this and donate that so that small town feel really does pull things together for Galt sure. is a fabulous city if you're looking for a place where everybody is family everybody knows what other people are doing and businesses and that good small hometown feel that we just don't get in our bigger cities Galt is your town Galt is your place it sounds like the people that live here there are people and so, back to you in the studio. All right, guys, and that was our lovely Tiffany out in Galt at Sean's Coffee Shop and Bakery, where they host lovely events, serve delicious treats, and excellent coffee. If you guys are ever in the area, please definitely check into that. All right, now we're going to take you out to Matthew Gilliam at the NAB Conference in Las Vegas. He will be inter interviewing TV Pro Gear. Take it away, Matt. All right, you're watching Sacktown Underground. This is your host, Matthew, and I'm here with Andrew. How are you? Nice to be here. Nice to have you here. <laughs> well, it's nice to be here. We're here with Old Familiar here. We're here with the uh, Access Sacramento uh, mobile TV truck here, and thing, this thing is uh, fantastic. It is a mobile television studio on wheels, and guess what? Andrew's company, TV Pro Gear, is the ones that built it. Andrew, can you tell us a little bit about the truck and why it is so magnificent? Sure. Well, uh, when Access Sacramento uh, contacted us, they wanted to have plenty of space inside, but they had a limitation that it couldn't be over 28 feet long, bumper to bumper. So we had to come up with a new design with opposing facing consoles, and seems to have worked, up, worked out pretty good. 
Well, yeah, it's worked out fantastic. You know, this truck has uh, gotten a lot of attention, not only down here at the NAB show, but anywhere that uh, it's seen in Sacramento. And uh, the truck it has many applications uh, from pro sports to different events and things like that. And uh, it's, I didn't know that it was specially designed. So how long did that designing process take? Was that a long uh, process? Um. It was fairly long. The design was about a three-month uh, process, and uh, Gary and others and uh, Ronisha had a lot of input and suggestions that we incorporated. And then once we had a, the design locked down, it took about five months to build. I was talking with one of you guys' reps earlier, and she was telling me, to my surprise, that you also built gear onto aircraft carriers yeah. and the space station. Can you tell us about that? Well, the, we, I think, are the exclusive uh, manufacturer for the Navy aircraft carriers. So we build the on-ship TV and radio stations. They're pretty similar equipment to what's in this, but um, everything has to be on a sway brace to rock and rock with the ship over the waves. And uh, special hardware that doesn't corrode because it's in a very salty atmosphere. But uh, we're pretty proud to be able to help with that. And we, we're just finishing up with CVN 79, the John F. Kennedy. It's our second quick carrier. And we have two more that we just got orders from. So that's nice business. Can you tell us anything else that you guys have going on? Or is, is it, it seems like you're borderline top secret with some of this stuff. But uh. We do have three different styles of trucks here that fill diff for different applications and diff for different budgets. But um, our clients range from the military to the major networks to schools and um, you know public government entities like PBS and Access Sacramento. This is Matthew Gilliam for Sacktown Underground on Access Sacramento. Back to you guys. Matthew, that's awesome. TV Pro Gear out there representing with their mobile studio service. I didn't even know that was a thing, but apparently it is, and that's a lot of technology to be lugging around. But earlier in our studios, Keith took the time to interview uh, Matthew about his time out in the NAB Las Vegas conference. Take it away, you two. Welcome to your own show. <laughs> well, thanks for having me, Keith. Um, talk to us about your experiences at the National Association of Broadcasting. What did you come across? Uh, one thing that was particularly interesting was uh, digital projection and Delta Company's brand new 8K DLP laser projector. Another uh, item that was premiered exclusively was the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. We also took time to stop by Vimeo's booth and uh, Vimeo it was actually promoting their new OTT service. The ability to live stream or to stream video packages. There was a lot of exciting equipment there. Those are just a few of the specific items that were very popular there. Our next story talks to us about a 27-year-old woman named Laura who, using the power of the bike, is going from Las Vegas to Arizona on a special trip for a very special cause. Our next story, called The Power of the Bike, we bring it to you as Ronisha with a great interview, and we can't wait to see it. Let's hear it. Past year or so, I've been getting really into bike riding, and I've been wanting to plan a long tour. And so when the opportunity came up for me to drive my dad out here, I thought, well, I'd like to visit my mom too. What if I turn this into an adventure for myself and throw my bike in the back of my dad's U-Haul and come out here and then bike out to visit my mom? And so as soon as I got that idea, I got on the internet, I started planning out routes, I got on Google Maps and saw if this was something that would be possible to do. And um, it became a reality. So I've actually had my bike for a few years now, but I haven't done any big trips with it. But I've been interested in the idea of bike packing. Um, there's this sort of whole online community and culture of bike packing and people that do these long trips, or it's also called bike touring. Just having everything you need on your bike and going off and just doing it. Um, I will have um, I have a multi-tool with knives on it, so I have a knife. Um, 
I promised my mom I would zip tie a um, pepper spray to my bike, so I'll have that. Um, but besides that, I mean, I need to conserve space. I'm packing everything I need. I need to conserve weight, so I'm The main concern is gonna be having enough food, and so I'm using most of the space in my bags to bring food. Um, and it's gonna be hot as hell, so I'm basically expecting to be covered in sweat and dirt the entire time. I'm gonna be a dirt bag, but that's okay. I mean, it's part of the experience, and so I keep envisioning the moment when I roll into Goodyear, Arizona, where my mom lives, and ride down the street to her house and just knock on the door, disgusting, like, dreads in my hair, covered in sweat, and just, like, ring the doorbell and then be like, I made it. And thank you to Renisha for covering that very inspirational story. Laura is a lovely young lady. Now, we move back on to sports with Keith Duganatis, who will be talking about the Kings. And what are you featuring, Keith? What's going on with them? Well, let's find out. Thank you for that introduction, Celestial. And thank you for all of our viewers here at Sacktown Underground. Hopefully, it is a great month of April and an even better month of May. The NBA playoffs start this month. The Sacramento Kings will not be in the field of 16 teams in the National Basketball Association's tournament to decide who holds the Larry O'Brien Trophy. For 12 straight years, the Sacramento Kings have been in a tailspin. Bad front office, bad coaching, bad draft picks, and just overall bad basketball put the team into a tailspin. It has been an insult to any season ticket holder member who has shed a dollar watching this team. Yet for the first time this year, with a new face of rookies, a second year under head coach Dave Yeager, and just an overall new vibe to the term Sacramento Proud and the Sacramento Kings organization, and for the first time in a long time, the franchise is on its way up. Yet the seeds were planted long before this season. It began when Vivek Ranadive, majority owner and what many consider to be a pain in the butt, hired Vlade Divac to be brought on the team's staff. Vlade Divac slowly but surely earned Ranadive's trust. It began when he drafted Willie Colley Stein. When everyone was worried about Demarcus Cousins and then head coach George Carl at the time butting heads on draft night. The draft pick was so weird that Divac didn't tell anybody in the room that he was taking Kali Stein. No one found out until Ronadive asked Divac that he was taking and who he was taking. And then we found out it was Willie Kali Stein. But then everything just went from bad to worse. And the franchise was put in total disarray the night of, All -Star, uh, of the All-Star game when Demarcus Cousins, the longtime MVP of the Kings team, a quote-unquote head case to some and a quote-unquote best basketball player the Kings had ever had, was traded away. Even Cousins didn't know about it until he was asking the presser about it and someone from the organization told him. Everyone on talk radio, on local television, on the street, at the barber shop, just in general, at the line of the DMV, because hello, have you ever been in line in the Sacramento DMV? You're there for days. Had an opinion on the trade. Yet the trade has been new life for the Sacramento Kings. It netted them Buddy Heald, who everyone close to the team says they wanted in that past year's draft but couldn't get because they weren't willing to trade up that high. It also netted them a couple of draft picks. And from there, the luck seemingly got better for the Sacramento Kings. Their lottery pick shot up to five, which allowed them to take Kentucky point guard and what looks to be a future all-star in De'Aaron Fox. They then were able to net way more rookies than anyone could ever imagine. Frank Mason in the second round. Before that, Justin Jackson in the first round. And even before that, they got Harry Giles. So the first time in a while, the Sacramento Kings actually had some signs of life. Yes, this year there were blowouts. Yes, this, this year there were buzzer beater wins from De'Aaron Fox. But what does it all mean if the Kings cannot leap off this into what looks to be a new era of proud? Fans have waited 10 plus years for a rebuild. So don't expect them to try to jump on board this whole new era of proud situation. Many still question Divock's ability as a majority general manager. And many still think that he's not fit for the job. Even Divock himself said that after the Cousins trade, if the team wasn't in a better spot in two years, he would leave the office. Time's ticking, and Divock knows that. But if Vlade Divock somehow is not only able to get the Kings back on track, but to get them back in the playoffs for the first time in 10 plus years, how do we judge his legacy? He already is the greatest team captain in the history of Sacramento Kings basketball. But what if Divac, as a general manager, in the second phase of his life and in the second phase of his career, 
of the Sacramento Kings organization is able to turn the tide. Does that make him the greatest Sacramento Kings player of all time? Does it at least make him top five, top ten? Or do we just, I don't know, classify him as a player and him as a general manager as two different beings? Only time will tell. As we already seen, fans have grown frustrated and weary over the years. But finally, slowly but surely, it looks like for the first time in their own in a long time, the Kings have a heartbeat. What awaits, we do not know. But I can tell you one thing, it sure is gonna be a heck of a ride. Get out the cowbells, break out the De'Aaron Fox jerseys. This could be, for the first time in a long time, a new era of proud. And they actually might mean it this time. And that's gonna do it for sports. I'm Keith Joganitis. Have a good day. And that was our lovely sports anchor, Mr. Keith Joganitis, covering our Sacramento Kings. Hopefully they do make us proud. I'm not a big sports fan. I'm not exactly sure, but Keith, you definitely gave me a great synopsis of their history, so I thank you for that. <laughs> All right, guys, and as you know, we always end our show with a musical guest. Today's guest will be from Stockton, California, band Yellow Dot. Thank you, Celestial. My next guest hail from the 209 in Stockton, California. They are an eclectic band that plays a variety of instruments and a variety of sounds come through their airwaves in their music. You can catch up with them on their website, their album at yellow.music.com, as well as on their Facebook page for all their tour updates, concerts, things of that nature, at Facebook at yellow.music. Ladies and gentlemen, Yellow Dot, and I am joined by David Molina. And David, thank you, and thank all of you for joining us here on Sacktown Underground. Hey, nice, Keith. Hey, thanks for having us. Real quick, before we get into some questions, why don't we go around and just introduce uh, each of the three members of this band here at Yellow Dot. Okay, we have uh, John Tiano on harmonica and uh, guitar and percussions. Okay. We have Manuel Gonzalez on percussions and guitars at times. Okay. And then myself, uh, string players and percussions. Awesome, uh, awesome. So real quick, you are an eclectic band, and I noticed when you guys were pulling up to our set today, you had a wide variety of instruments and uh, just tools that you need to perform today. Uh, just talk about, on average, how many instruments do you guys bring on the road uh, to certain events? Because uh, you have a, a bunch of sounds, and you need certain instruments to get those sounds, so you would want to have all of your options available. Yeah, definitely. Uh, on hand, sometimes anywhere from six to eight instruments, you know, depending on the genre that we're doing. Some come and some go. Okay, interesting. So, real quick, why don't we talk about how uh, this whole thing started? Um, you told me this dates back to about 2005, 2006, when you were meeting all these people. Just how did Yellow Dot come about? Uh, just a lot of local musicians. We all intertwine ourselves, anyways, and so I just wanted to kind of head a project of uh, improv music, of world music, jam band, electronica. Just throw it all in there and just have fun with our local community and people that want to try this style of music. And then uh, a lot of us friends have known each other for many years and uh, in between other projects, that, that's what we can do is Yellow Dot Music. <laughs> All right, well I will not take up any more of your gentleman's time. We'll let you get on the uh, instruments and let you perform as you uh, uh, wanted to for years now, since 2005. And before we let them go, you can follow them on yellow.music.com and they can also be reached hey, via Facebook at Yellow Dot Music on their Facebook page. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Yellow Dot. Thank you. Thank you. 